Hey everyone, welcome to another emulation video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to set up the Sega Model 2 emulator to play in widescreen and also have the uh, config files already set up for you so you don't need to set them up in each and every game. Uh, just to note, you will need the uh, merge ROM set of the Sega Model 2 ROM, so just look those up on Google. They're pretty easy to find. Uh, so if you're interested, let's go ahead and go to the page that has an emulator. So travel to that link, download the Model 2 emulator right here, put that on your computer. Then the second site we're going to go to is this one right here. Now what you're going to need is one of these two files. Play it safe, just download both of them. Uh, if you don't know what type of joystick you have, uh, mine's work with the X input uh, and I have a Logitech F310 and it worked fine. So just download these just in case one of them doesn't work correctly. Go ahead and use the other one and you should be good to go. So once you have those two files, just go ahead and close your browser. We're going to navigate to the folder that has the files and also the folder where you're going to be installing the emulator. So let's go ahead and extract all of these to a separate folder. So just control A, select all of them, right click extract to separate folder and then we're going to go ahead and put the emulator on the right side here so copy those files paste them on the folder that you want to include that in and then we're going to do the configurator we're going to take that one do the same thing to that paste it in there now before we do anything else go ahead and just double click and start the emulator so it creates that mv data folder up there once that's done just go ahead and close the emulator and then first thing we're going to do is literally just use either the X input or the D input. Like I said, for me, it was the X. So I'm going to go ahead and copy all of those, put them inside here. Now, there's another way to another method to do this, but this is way easier because it doesn't cause the frustration of, uh, you know, you having to go back and forth and, uh, you know, do multiple files. So this is the easy way to do it here. This is going to set up everything for you. So you get the message here. Go ahead and replace the files that it is going to overwrite. So once you've done that, as long as you have the ROMs in your folder, you should be good to go. So let me go ahead and show you what these ROMs are going to look like. Okay, so this is what the ROMs themselves are going to look like. So go ahead and click on that. And the folder that has ROM should look like this. All right, so all we're going to do, I fast forward and put that stuff in here. So the ROMs will go in here. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and relaunch the emulator again. And we want to make sure that this is set to 1920 by 1080. So go ahead and pick this option here. And you want to set this to 1920 by 1080. And you want to go ahead and save that just in case it didn't set it for you before. There we go. So once we're done, just go ahead and launch that. And we're going to launch uh, Daytona first so we can make sure that it is working with the uh, you know, actual config files. And we shouldn't have to do anything to get that game set up. I like the scan line. So you can go ahead in there and set those up. Switch to full screen. And the start button was able to start the game, and you want to do the right trigger to, uh, you know, choose the car and get the race going. So as you can see, the game is running full screen and in widescreen, so that's good to go. So we're set with that one. I'm going to go ahead and close that out, and we're going to launch the House of the Dead one to make sure that the gunfire lines up with the cursor. All right, let's give this one a shot. Now, when you use the light gun games, you're going to have to hit Alt and then the corresponding letter to get to the tab that you want to. So I like the scan line. So let's go ahead and put those on. And once you do that, it does uh, go full screen for you. Now, on these, you're going to have to hit the number one to get the game to start. So as you can see, the gunfire is lined up with the cursor itself. If you don't do this, uh, you know, what's going to happen is you're going to shoot and the cursor is going to be in one spot and the gunfire is going to hit somewhere else. You're not going to be able to hit your targets. So that's the way to get that fixed and get it running. So as you can see, everything is working fine. Uh, one quick word of note here. If you ever get into a game and you do not like the way, you know, the configuration file is set up for you, you can always go in here. And configure the controls for each game separately. Let me go ahead and launch one here just for the heck of it. So let's do Daytona USA and I'll show you what this menu looks like. So you would go in here, game. You have to load the game first. Go into config controls and you're going to get this window. So this is kind of self-explanatory. Whatever you don't like, you can go ahead and assign a different button to it. 
and you can do that right here so you have the analog settings here and then the regular buttons and keys up here so forth it's very rare i mean i haven't come one across that i haven't you know like the way it's set up so that you know it's all on your preference just in case you do come one across one you can go ahead and change it so that's it for this video if you guys like that go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed please do so and we'll catch you on the next one